Well, the Biden administration is once again extending the moratorium on evictions, this time to areas of the country where COVID-19 cases are high. State and local officials are trying to take advantage of diversion programs to clear the backlog of eviction cases. Adam Pinsker reports. I know we don't live like this, I apologize, but... The pandemic is taking its toll on Bloomington resident Jeremy Bundy. I would be horrified if I had children living in something like this right now. He says on July 13th, Duke Energy cut off power to his Arlington Valley home after he couldn't pay the bill, even though he qualified for Indiana's rental assistance program. The state told me to contact Duke Energy and give them that website number because they were going to be paying my light bill for me. And Duke Energy told me on the phone that that was not their job. In addition to weathering sweltering temperatures with no air conditioning or electricity, Bundy is sweating out eviction proceedings initiated by his landlord. He fell behind on his rent after losing his job in construction at the start of the pandemic. I've been out and put applications in places and just nobody wants to put the time in to hire me because they're afraid when the pandemic's up, I'm going to go back to work in construction. Almost a year ago, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention imposed a federal moratorium on evictions as people fell on hard times during the pandemic. But housing security was a problem before the pandemic. Indianapolis, in fact, is number 14 in the country. Um, out, of, out of all metropolitan areas, it's the 14th highest eviction rate. Uh, Fort Wayne is, I forget which number they are, but they're also in that top, I think, 20 at least. Even this latest moratorium is tenuous at best. If an Indiana county isn't at a substantial or high rate of transmission for 14 straight days, the moratorium in that county will end and evictions can resume. However, our eviction diversion program would still be in place. And that does ask the landlord and directs the landlord to complete that eviction diversion affidavit at least 20 days before filing for court. Monroe County Small Claims Judge Catherine Stafford helped unveil the eviction diversion program last month. It requires landlords to complete an eviction diversion affidavit at least 20 days before filing for court. If it's an eviction for non-payment, we put it on the landlord to notify the tenant of the diversion program. We put it on the tenant to apply for anything that they may be eligible for. That includes Indiana Emergency Rental Assistance Funds, which can be sought by anyone who has lost income due to COVID-19. But Brandon Beeler with Indiana Legal Services says some states are still distributing the first round of emergency rental assistance dollars that were approved by the federal government at the end of 2020. Many of these statewide programs that provide emergency housing funds are overwhelmed with requests. Every time we talk to a tenant, at least either calling our office or in these virtual clinics, have no idea about rental assistance or didn't know they could apply. Judge Stafford says Indiana law requires landlords to work with tenants who are struggling to pay rent under what's known as duty to mitigate. The goal is to get landlords to exhaust all options before they file for an eviction against a tenant. There's no way to expunge an eviction. Once it's been filed, it's always going to be there. And a prospective landlord might not really notice or care whether it led to an eviction or not. Beeler is hoping every jurisdiction in the state can enact some kind of eviction diversion program if they haven't already. Perhaps there could be a pre-filing status conference that just brings both parties to the table to say, what can we do? Like, what, you know, how, you know, what can the tenant, can the tenant pay X amount of dollars per week just to kind of start making it up? Judge Stafford says it's premature to say if Monroe County will continue its eviction diversion program after the COVID-19 pandemic is over. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Adam Pinsker. Duke Energy said in a statement they have temporarily turned Jeremy Bundy's power back on and have tried unsuccessfully so far to reach him by phone.